Sure. The live link I can grab for you. Sure. Yes, please. Thank you. Sure, sure. Great. Get those introductions, everyone, in, and we'll get started in just a moment. Great. Our recording started. Welcome, Nina. Welcome, Kip. Great to see more familiar friends and faces. Uh, you don't need to click that link, everyone. That's just for Adam in our chat. Welcome again, Melissa. Great to have you back. All right, let's get going, everybody. We're here um, at the almost the end of remote learning month. All of you are pretty familiar now. Remember, we've been giving a nice door prize at the end of each session. If you use hashtag Minecraft EDU on Twitter, and you can include hashtag remote learning, hashtag end chat. If you teach English, spread the word on all the great stuff that you learned today um, to get others inspired. Um, I, of course, most of you know Stephen Reed already, so I'll hand it over to him in a moment. But there's his Twitter handle if you want to say hi and a huge thank you for his entire week that he's been inspiring us with uh, or multiplayer with Minecraft. Mm -hmm. uh, you may have started at the beginning with us, and we started with solo assignments for your students, meaning one world. You might have all your students complete that world. And then turn it in with something like screenshots, the world file, Flipgrid, so you can assess uh, if they were able to do what you were asking them to do. Then we talked about what if that student passes that world on to another student in their group, builds more good stuff, and then it keeps getting passed on till it makes it to you, which now leads us to this entire week where we've taken you through multiplayer. Uh, and so whoop, Monday, we did multiplayer. Yesterday, we did how does it work? So lots of technical goodness. We hope you had a chance to give it a go. Try to set up your router. Try to get someone to join and see if you came across any questions. Um, but today, we're mainly going to look at what do you do with it, OK? We're going to look at uh, what might be the lessons you teach. How do you set it up? Are you going to do groups with your students and different hosts? Are you just going to be the host? All of that's today. Tomorrow is eSports, so we'll get playing um, and see how we get that competition element into uh, our lesson planning. And then finally, collaborative world building. Uh, remember, here's also what we talked about the rest of the month was right now we are still just designing that lesson, right? All of you are brainstorming. How am I going to make this multiplayer come to life for my students? And then just some of the logistics of that. When do I want to do it? How am I going to assign it? Am I going to tell folks in Teams or Canvas or Google Classroom? Then actually host it. In our case, we'll be hosting a multiplayer session. Accept those submissions. Are you going to accept the world? Are you going to accept a Flipgrid fly through? How are you going to accept that final product? And then the grading and the celebrating. So today we'll, we'll spend a lot more time in this area thinking about the logistics of what do you do with multiplayer once it's yeah. set up. Again, we talked about what are those ways that you might collect that assessment. Today we're just playing in the world file, but think in your mind where that might go when you're done with it. How might you assign it out and how might you get it back in? Uh, if you I, I, sorry, Wendy, I'm notes. just going to see. I'll talk about a bit about that with things like We'll, when we're doing multiplayer today, we'll talk about NPCs within a multiplayer world and stuff like that. So we'll 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 build that out. I love it. Uh, meet a couple of folks. There we go. Um, just a quick <laughs> note for technicalities today. Remember, most of you who are repeats with us, you're going to have Minecraft Education Edition downloaded. Adam can drop that link in if you're brand new and haven't downloaded it yet. Open it up with us and make sure the game and us are easily accessible so you can follow along today. If you want help, you can uh, you can ask in the chat, but we prefer so we can follow up with you, especially if you have a bigger question or need. Um, use this link to create a support ticket with Adam and Kyle and Carrie on our team. Make sure to put the word workshop in the title. That will mean they'll get back to you during this session to try to support you. Um, and in the future, you, of course, can come to our community hub. That's at educommunity.minecraft.net. We've got, it's not only where you can subscribe 
to um, know when the next events are, all sorts of learn to play articles, right? You can, if you're a Mac person or Chromebook, all the technical setup goodies are here. And then that community section is where you can ask questions from our mentors. We have lots of mentors um, on the call with us as well. At the end of this week, when Remote Learning Month ends, you'll have a chance to reach out and get matched to another mentor for a one-on-one -on -one call to walk through your lesson idea and test things with them and ask them questions. So that's our technical setup every way, everybody. Yesterday, just to recap, we um, talked about the technicalities of hosting a multiplayer game. We did talk about that you need to be logged into the same Office 365 tenant, such as at nycschools.com, whatever your, your school domain is. All your players do need to be on that account. And we'll test that today with Steven. We have some demo accounts from the same tenant so you can see the magic of what it feels like when we all play together. Um, you all must have that same Minecraft Education Edition version. So check in the bottom right as you open up your copy of Minecraft Education Edition. And now's a good time to get it updated and a good time to tell your students to do the same. Uh, and a few other things too. You may remember we went to um, the multiplayer page in the game where you see all these faces. We talked about what our IP address is and our port. Stephen walked us through all of that. So we won't touch on too much of that today, but if you do have questions, Adam will drop that link into the chat of our entire article that walks through all of this great technical stuff. Um, and we also talked a little bit about how to configure your routing for port forwarding, right? That goes with your internet service provider. Again, only the host ever needs to do this. And once you do it once, you're all you're all sorted to go to multiplayer out to your heart's content. Um, with that, Stephen, mm. um, want to go ahead and give us a nice another intro of yourself for any noobs on the call. But otherwise, sure. let's talk about what can we do with multiplayer in the hour. Thank you let's, so much again for coming. Not at all. Thank you, Wendy, for hosting um, and introduction. So, yeah, my name is Stephen Reed. I'm based in the UK, but I work globally. And my uh, my history has always been education with technology in relevant, meaningful ways in all of the spaces that it's needed, whether that's with children or adults or the elderly with dementia or technology can really have the biggest impact. Um, and as a result, I've done exactly that. I've worked with even Minecraft with adults with dementia and sound systems and sensory um, um, solutions to that to that particular um, affliction, right through to building a school in South Africa with a single 3D printer. Um, as long as it's like I say, it's relevant, it's meaningful, preferably real world learning and localized where possible as well, de decolonized, democratized education. And that path has led me to 3D printing, um, uh, virtual reality, uh, uh, artificial intelligence, games based learning, where I've used over 140 games worldwide. And Minecraft sits at the pinnacle of that games based learning experience. And I've been using it for 11 years, which brings me uh, to Microsoft, where I am now a customer engagement um, PM, and my role is in helping teachers to adopt and use our technologies, significantly Minecraft, through meaningful experience um, and, and growing experience. Um, most of you, I think, on the call have probably met me. So, so let's crack in. Um, one thing I will say, Wendy, is if possible, while we're while I'm doing this introduction, could you find those logins that we set up for this, please? Because I went into my chats today and I'm like, where are those logins? I can't find them. They're in a chat somewhere with Susie and I couldn't find it. So I apologize. <laughs> I'll go take a peek around for them. Well, I do that also when you get sorted, Stephen, there mm -hmm. is a couple questions about just to back up onto versions and port forwarding. Mm -hmm. We've got a um, question from Chris, is port forwarding still needed with 1.14? Like you have version 1.1431, and the answer, I believe, is yes, right? Absolutely. But as, 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 as Minecraft Education Edition currently stands, you will always need to port forward um, at this point until we either work on another solution or we um, or technology changes entirely. But yes, right now, that's the case. Great. Looks like we also have the server name for the port forwarding, i.e. FTP, HTTP, says Kip. Uh, do you mean when you're, it's asking for a port forward? 
that would be the Azure. It's in the it's in that PDF and it's the Azure webs Azure website dot net. OK, so it's not dependent, Stephen. I'm, I'm trying to log on the port forwarding. I'm entering your uh, your IP address and it's not allowing me to do that because it says I don't have a server name right. Is this an education edition kit? Yes, education edition. And you're in the game. No, I'm not in. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. You're in the router part. Today, how to set your router up to port forward? That's what I'm trying to trying to do. But it's asking for a server name, which I didn't remember you going over. I didn't. And I I actually have never come across that. So that is, we need to look at that independently. Let's raise a ticket about that. Um, and let's see if that's something that other people have come across. I haven't. In all the time I've been doing it, I've never been asked for a domain. Um, and I don't disbelieve you. I think maybe your router is asking for a domain, but I don't know what that is. And the only thing I can match it to is the Azure website domain that we give you in the PDF. That, okay. that, would, that would be the only to try that and it might work. Um, but other than that, I haven't got experience of that. So I apologize. That's a rare one for me. Thanks, Stephen. I appreciate that. Not at all. And we, I'll, I'll help you through that kit independently if we have to. Um, so today there's a number of things I want to cover. I'm going to go into um, play and I'm going to go into view my worlds. And I want to show you how what we do with Minecraft um, multiplayer and how we can manage Minecraft multiplayer within a space. And, and, and to, to give you an idea of how we do that, I'm going to start with a new world. And I'm going to start with a flat world and I'm just going to call this multiplayer uh, multiplayer pedagogy oops and the the reason i want to start with pedagogy is because it's like it's a digital pedagogy understanding how to use the world so as best to help the children to learn is digital pedagogy and it's like using minecraft as a as a way of saying to the children, here's how I'll guide your learning. And yes, you're in a multiplayer environment, but we're still going to guide. And so let's create a creative world. We'll make it peaceful. When the children enter my world, I want them to be members because I want them to be able to build and things, but not necessarily do the other stuff. At this stage, simply because I'm going to show you some stuff um, of how we might do this, I want to create a flat world because we're just going to, I just want to model some stuff for you at the moment. And then I'm going to do show coordinates as good practice. Activate cheats we're going to need. Code builder I'm going to switch off for this one. Always day I'm going to switch on. Uh, show classroom settings, perfect weather. Everything else is on except a mutable world. Mm, maybe show border effect. By the way, team, M-E-E, -E, thank you for that little button there. That is so good for me as a world builder. I don't like those little red glittery sparkles. And so the fact you can switch them off is real nice. And I'll talk about that while I'm while I'm talking about the multiplayer aspect. So I'm going to go into play. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask um, Wendy on the team to join me. I just need to double check I'm in as, yeah, I'm in as Microsoft. So Wendy, if you could join me, um, I'm going to show some stuff. I'm going to go in and remember what I did yesterday. I would go into start hosting. Um, Unless you're still looking for those things, that's OK, Wendy, or if you find those. Yeah, I'm trying to look in the chat for you. Um, I couldn't find them. I, yeah. I, I searched like for 40 minutes today and I'm like, why can't I find these? <laughs> um, I tried I'll all sorts of things. Look, yeah. yeah, it's OK. Um, or anyone else on the Microsoft team who's logged in as Microsoft, uh, on their Microsoft account might want to join me at this time. Otherwise, I'll just start until someone does. Um, and that's OK, because I don't need anyone right away. So what we're going to do is there's a number of ways in which you would set up a world that would allow you to pedagogically control the environment and lead the children through their learning. And one of those tools, let's go and collect them at all, actually. One is borders. I'm going to take borders. We're also going to take, and I'll just get these ready, allow blocks. The other is deny blocks. And you might have seen some stuff like this before, but a lot of people don't associate them with multiple. A lot of people think they're just things that you would use in a single player lesson that they've designed. But actually, these are critical for multiplayer. Um, we're also going to get ourselves an NPC. And we're going to get ourselves some chalkboards. So I'm just going to put up a board. We also have posters and we also have slates. And these are lovely um, little things that I, I 
honestly, I use them mostly in worlds that I know will be multiplayer. And we've also got slates. I keep doing that. I always forget the, the, the first little character. There we are. Boom. Um, if anybody is trying to join me from the Microsoft side, it is pick water map pick water pickaxe water map pickaxe. Um, I can't think of a rhyme for that. Oh well. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that as you get your players in, if you go into world builder mode forward slash WB, you have these borders. Thanks very much for coming in, Wendy. And what I'm going to do is I am just going to ask Wendy to come over here and find me. I'm to your left once you're in. And remember yesterday, Wendy's able to join me today because I did my port forwarding yesterday. And so as a class teacher, I don't have to worry about that again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a border. And then I'm going to ask Wendy to step inside that little house that I built. And Wendy can't, she can't go in it. So you're going to have to come round to the door, Wendy. <laughs> and land on the floor, so just that's it, and then walk in the door. And now if I close that, try and get out, Wendy. Fly up and fl try to fly away. There we are. And Wendy is not able to fly away. She's stuck in a box. You don't see it, but this border... Steven! This border, I know, right? This border oh. goes all the way up to the sky. It goes all the way up there. And so what we've now got is we've got an, um, an ability, because if you're a teacher thinking, how am I going to control 30 kids in my class? Build a plot world. This is a plot world. So we give our children little plots. Now, this is a ridiculously small plot, so this is not fair. But if you had the time, and remember, you can duplicate your world. So once you create a plot world, you can then you can then just duplicate it and use it over and over and over again. The only way she's getting out of there is if I open the door. So if you come out of that one, Wendy, and go into the next one. And what I might do is put a slate here and I might say, Wendy's, whoops, plot. That becomes that student's plot. And students become, to, they come to know this is my plot. And once I'm in there, I can be popped in there. And then that becomes their space for multiplayer. Now, that doesn't necessarily work if you have children, um, if you want children to be able to work in a, you know, in, in, in a, as a whole class. And you, but if you've got children in groups and they're all building a part of, you know, Constantinople, for example, as part of a history project, and we did this with Turkey, hence the example. And the kids had sections to build. So they had a section of the wall. Then they had where the wall got breached. Then they had the inner sanctum. Then they had the archery tower. And then what I did was I just put the kids in a multiplayer environment. And I put them in plots. And then they went and I was like, who's in the archery team? Me, head over here. And I locked them into these 30 by 30 plots. And it's just a case, you know, for 35 by 30, you just measure it out. 30 by, and that's not exactly 30, but 30 by 30. And then we just do that. You might want to go around and clean it up afterwards. And then the kids, and sorry, this cow is now stuck in there. It also works for the villagers and all the things. So it's not as if if the kids spawn cows as part of their story, they won't leave their plot. Now, I personally think, I mean, they do their job. I know why they're bright red, but they're unsightly. I, 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 there's, I, don't, I don't want that to be, if I take a photograph of Istanbul later, I, my collective Istanbul with the kids. I don't want that to show. So what I do is I just bury them. I'm just going to show this. And Wendy, if you could come over here for me, please. I've got our account. Give me hey. one sec and then I will just making a slide where people can see them and then I'll be back in your world. Not at all. Okay. I think we're just going to do a lottery. We're just going to do like whoever can sign in first wins. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. What is the join code? <laughs> well, at the moment, we're the join code. I'll actually, by the time we get to that, I'll be on a different world. So I'll give you that afterwards because um, I'll, I'll be using a different world to do that. So, uh, yeah, we'll just wait on Wendy. But what I'm ultimately doing here is I'm creating a system where those those blocks are hidden. 
And okay, I'm back now, Stephen. Right. So I just need you to walk over this little land bridge over here. I know you're trying to fly. Tap, tap. <laughs> there we are. And then you can, whoops, you've gone into that cage. You're going to have to come out that cage. <laughs> there we are. That's it. And then just come over so that you land on me down here. And then walk over this land bridge just to here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to close that up and then underground I'm going to put another border. And now, now try to walk around Wendy just in different directions. You'll see that Wendy's now, she's completely stuck. She can't go anywhere. So ah. you can't see them and the kids can't see them, but it's in there. So it doesn't affect the, the aesthetics of your world. So the border blocks are fantastic for creating plot worlds. And you just take some time to set those. What you can also do, and I'll show you a, a, a shortcut. Let me just rescue Wendy because that's not fair. <laughs> there we go. You can get out using just uh, those two. Luke said no, no red sparks. Yes. So the reason for that is because if we go into my settings and I go down to classroom settings, show border effect. Now you'll see that red sparks are starting to appear under the ground and over here you'll see that the borders all have red sparks. I just personally switch it off because when I'm trying to, it's particularly around aesthetics for the world and I want it to look like the way I want it to look, I find that those little red sparks get caught in the machinima that I'm making or they get caught in the screenshot, <coughs> that kind of stuff. And so I just switch that off. But you don't have to. In fact, for beginners sort of first getting used to this, you may not remember where you buried them. And so, um, so to give you an example, in the We Are The Rangers worlds, we had a rhino and we wanted the rhinos will wander around the world but we created rhino and we wanted the kids to be able to visit one with a ranger who would then tell us about this injured rhino and how it had been uh they attempted to be you know the poachers had attempted to get it etc i just couldn't keep it where it was and then i realized if i dig down into the ground and i just create a small pen i then put the rhino in the pen and i'll show you what that looks like just now with chickens um, so you you know these ones are buried. So I'm just going to do that and that, I think, which completes it. Yeah. And then we just put that there. I'll just keep that there so you can see. But if I now put a chicken inside there and I put a villager, chill, chill a villager, and I put a villager in there. Right, so we'll do that for NPCs. Um, so I'll put a chicken in. And I'll put uh, a human in and they will go nowhere. They will stay there for the entire game because, look, he just got caught in the corner. He tried, but he didn't get out. And so we can also use this in multiplayer for guiding um, uh, curriculum. And I, I mean, I would love to tell you about how we and villagers to make it look as if Constantinople was being raided through an egg timer-esque shape. But I can tell you all about that another time on another workshop, perhaps. Um, but... Ultimately, I can just hide that and we can have, oh, look, there's a little villager over there. And um, the kids can still interact with him, but they can't get in with him and he can't get out. So it's a nice uh, it's a nice little addition. So that's borders. And I use borders as um, I use borders as plots in cities to give them plot worlds for building their own property. Or uh, at the moment, I'm doing a project to build 100,000 trees and for every tree that's planted a real tree will be uh, sorry for, for every tree that's built a real tree will be planted in real life and so we've created plot worlds where the children go in and they get a plot and they say that's my plot and they build a tree um, and and that's just how it works and it's great in multiplayer so we can have huge numbers of kids in, in at once. The second thing we can do is we can have uh, build deny blocks and so what we can do is for multiplayer we might say okay this is our, I'm going to get brick, and I'm going to say this is our space um, for, this is our building for starting in. And I'm going to make this really small just for si just for time, but this would be our little building for building in, uh, for starting in. This is where our spawn is going to be. Um, and what I'll do is I'll make it a castle. So we'll do this. So this is our little castle starting in and then inside here i'm going to do forward slash set world spawn whoops 
and that means that this is where everyone will start when they spawn in. However, what I don't need are the kids starting up and going, oh, I'm going to take this to build somewhere else. Um, and, and this goes for, I mean, I'm showing you as a spawn area, but so what I'm doing is I'm putting deny blocks underneath hey. the walls. Oops. There we are. And then if I just cover them up, so there's a deny block underneath each row of this wall. This is actually better explained as a World War II exercise, which I'll, I'll tell you about in a minute. But what it now means is, Wendy, if you could come over here for me to this mm. castle. Okay. One sec. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Coming out of sleep. There we go. To the castle. Coming. Yeah, and I think you're around the other side, right? Yeah, you are. That's good. Okay. And then drop inside the castle. And then here we are. And then I'm just going to watch you and you're going to try and destroy the walls. You'll notice that she can't do it. And she can't do it because this world, she should be able to do it. In fact, destroy that piece there that I've just put. Yeah, you can build. She can build a door, but she can't. Uh, she can't. Um, destroy the walls. What I could do, um, given that you can destroy the door and well uh, well done, is if I just put a deny block down, now you can't build a door. And so what we can do is as a multiplayer, you know, this, this is all about managing the world, of course. This is all about being you know, structurally and pedagogically safe. It's safe for teachers to come. She wouldn't let them well, come in until 2.30 this afternoon, even though they were not teaching today. Let's mute. Oop, I think yeah. I found someone. There we go. <laughs> there we are. Good. All right. All right. Um, so if I and could so, take a quick pause really quick, I wanted to recap for folks and see what they, hopefully they're able to try the blocks that you're showing. Mm -hmm. so does this look right? Um, what I've captured from what you've just shared. Oh my gosh, I love the background of the, of our, of our chickens and such. Um, let me just pull up my notes. Okay, cool. So if we were setting up right when we're making our lesson plan right like so step one you pulled this world up for us right and we're yeah. kind of building it right we're, we're thinking of are there plots that we want to make using those blocks That's where we're uh, at. Yeah. putting do we want to put up our signs so we're here um and then we might go through some of these other steps right like well, yeah. what is the objective what do we want when my kids get in here what do i want them to do what are those instructions then you could decide, are you only going to be the only host like Stephen is right now? We'll do this one right now, but then maybe at the end we can just talk about that lesson setup. If you were going to have multiple hosts and do this in small groups in your room. And then Stephen, maybe we could just talk about the logistics on how long is this? Mm -hmm. Are you going to have it be a real time session, right? Like my nephew had an 11 o'clock class today, a Zoom call till 12 and world world studies, and then he left. Yep. Like, uh, do you recommend a one hour that's already existed scheduling and we're all going to do multiplayer during that one hour? Or do you suggest a multiplayer being over time that you've got this multiplayer world, you have two weeks, log in whenever you have time to complete and build your castle, something like that. And then finally, how we might assess it. So we're yeah. we're all the way back here at step one. Does that sound like a fair capturing of the different steps that you might go through as you're setting up your multiplayer? Absolutely, and step one is vital because if you don't get step one right, and I often do this when I do general PD, but if you don't get step one right, everything else becomes a problem like the hosts can't join or they can join but they can knock your buildings down or they can knock each other's buildings down or they don't know what the objective is because you haven't set the signs up that have told them what they should be doing so everything comes from step one quite often people just be like i've got this great idea i'm going to multiplayer it. i'm going to bundle a bunch of kids in and we're just going to make it work and mm -hmm. you know what it might but as teachers i think you all know that this 
this foundation of where do I need border blocks? Where should I use allow blocks? Should this be an immutable world? Like, how are my children going to Im uh, sort of be able to impact this world? And what will the impact of them being in it be? Mm -hmm. um, and so that's really important. So we're almost there. We've got a few things still to cover for find as for setting up and management of your world. And then we move on to your objectives for sure. Perfect. Great. We'll keep going. And then so let's finish up this step, Stephen. And then why don't we give everyone maybe two or three minutes to go ahead on Monday, everybody, we asked you, what do you teach? What do you want to teach on? Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll give you a minute just to go into the lesson library and the world library, find yourself one, save it. And now you can start playing and making your your allow blocks and things like that, starting to set up the, almost like you would your own classroom, um, starting to set up some of these signs to make it your lesson space. So I love that. Cool. Thanks for a quick stop, Stephen. I'll let you keep going now. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Okay, I'm just checking the, the chat as well. People working through the build and I, et cetera. It's brilliant. Okay, so uh, one of the questions um, from Miranda Max said, how um, you can build, you can take them all the way down to the bottom. So here, that's a really good question, actually. So what you could do is, um, I'm just going to go and be a student for a moment, but if I'm a student, I can still go down below, whoops, I can go, it turns out it's because this is a flat. Oh, you might need to reshare because I stole you again. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's okay. Um, here we are, share screen. Just let me know when that's back up. Can you see that? Yeah, gotcha. check. Good, Thanks. okay. So what I'm doing now is I can go under the world. So you'll notice that I um, deny blocks. I can't. Uh, I can't destroy anything above. Whoops. I can certainly destroy below it. So somebody could tunnel beneath destroy blocks. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, sorry, deny blocks. There's the deny block there. So I'm underneath it. Same with borders. I believe, if I'm right in saying, we can go. Oh, no, you can't. Borders go up and down, so that's brilliant. I wasn't sure they did, but they do. Borders go up and, uh, and down. Now, here's a really interesting thing, though, with borders. Uh, sorry, with deny blocks, is if I do a series of deny blocks, I'm going to go into WB and I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, which means I cannot place any, well, I need to go into a student mode. A student mode, I can't, I can put it there, but I can't put it there. But what I could do is I could go into, say, for example, it would be easier for me just to do, yeah, WB. So I go into world builder mode and I can do, Uh, let's just build three blocks high. Then I'm going to get rid of everything here. And then what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to put allow blocks. And we'll talk about allow blocks in a second about what they are. But I just want to show you that actually this only, if I go WB back to, this is now me back in student mode, I can't place there, but I can place there. So you can cancel, you can have areas. Imagine this was a World War II bunker and you didn't want them building anything in the bunker, but you wanted them to build above in the garden because they had to build the roof of the Anderson shelter, for example. So you can protect what's inside because you've already modeled that, but you can then um, do this. You might want to make, maybe you're doing a multi-story. I, I did a multi-story a while ago on gender equality. And as they moved up the multi-story, they all had to do jobs and the women got paid less. And it was just this brilliant exercise in teaching children to think about equality in, in, in that um, context. And But what we were able to do was once tasks had been done and children had finished them, we denied them access to that floor again. So, I mean, they could go to the floor, but they could do anything with it until eventually they got to the top. And then what we were able to do was, depending on where they got sent to, i.e. males and females to different offices, um, we made sure that they were either bordered out or they couldn't build in certain areas. And so this was a really nice way of helping them to realize that, you know, this is a, this is a, a really nice equality um, exercise where there are things some of us can do um, and there are things some of us can't do or places we're not allowed to do certain things and so yeah. on. And so you can Whenever use... Oh, sorry. An important note too is that if someone's just getting started and you wanted to just do a world where you didn't want to do allow blocks or things like that, it, you always can start your first one or two and have a digital citizenship lesson about 
not breaking folks and things like oh, uh, folks creations and things. So that can always be a, a good first step and then get yourself into the, the allow blocks. But you still can have everyone come in without using kind of that advanced layer of, of building your allow blocks in for folks just to see how things go for sure. Oh, absolutely. And I think actually that goes, I mean, I think if you're not doing that, then you really should be uh, for everything. If you're going to use Minecraft, let's set some rules. We don't destroy each other's work. We have a we have an agreement that we don't wander off and we stick to task and all that kind of stuff. Uh, not we don't say anything we shouldn't in the chat. All those sorts of things. And we have you know we build relationships and have agreements with our kids around that. So for sure you could just start with that. Now the other thing we're going to do is allow blocks. And I'm just going to put these in. And I'm just going to put in. I'm not allowed to do that. But I'm just going to put in allow blocks here. And again, the ones beside it, I'm just going to bury. We're going to fill this up. OK, so I know that there's allow blocks there. And actually, um, Wendy, if you could come over and just place on any of those allow blocks as a student. Uh, over behind you, here we are. So if you could hit just just what to do is build a row from this one to this one. Show me what that looks like. Just build a row of material. And then just keep coming over until you get to this one. Yeah, I'll fill that for you. There we go. Thanks. <laughs> OK, that'll do. So now we know that we've got allow, 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 and then we have no allow under these ones, but she's still allowed. So at this moment, because of the way we built the world, she's allowed to do anything unless denied or blocked from an area. But if I go into settings and I change my world, show classroom settings to immutable, and then I press escape. Now try it, Wendy. Now try building uh, right where you're standing. She's not able to anymore. And that's because the whole world is now immutable, which means it cannot be mutated except on, and I'll just clear these for you. I can because I'm in teacher mode, except on the allow blocks. So do that for me, Wendy. There Yay. You go. Build on allow blocks, she just can't build off of the allow blocks. And so now what we can do is we could make, say you've got a world that's pirate adventure world and you've already built it and you think, heaven forbid, the, come, the kids come in here and they start destroying it. But I do want them to build on that pirate ship. And I'll show you this in an example later when we start to look at um, multiplayer as esports. Um, we can you can do that. You can just give them allow blocks to build in and you can have them. You can have them do that. And so that takes us on to that's that's I mean, we have got NPCs which can then guide and we have got signs that say you are able to. Oops, I'll just get that right able to build here. We can also place NPCs that can guide our um, our players and you can say, you know, NPCs that say this is the such and such district. In this district, this is the construction. In this district, you are allowed to blah, 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 and you can have them do that. Um, and so there's so many things, ways that we can prepare the world for multiplayer and I can't emphasize it enough a lot of people skip this and they're just like I just want my kids in and then they wonder why there's holes and things and there's TNT and the kids don't know what to do and they built in the wrong area and they built together when they should have been in separate teams and it's like just have a think about it just take your time and think where do I put my children I love what it. do I want them to experience it's just that and management aspect yeah Luke and some of our me mentors in the chat mentioned that you know, now once you get that idea in your mind, what's that world you want to do? Um, we'll send a follow up again where you can match up with a mentor and maybe walk through a 30 minute one on one with them to kind of help go through this and think about how you want to set this up. So if you're yeah. just write down any questions you have or thoughts or things that might still be confusing to you. Adam also dropped in our Minecraft Teacher Academy um, that has live training videos and walks through all of this step by step. But we're so happy to have Stephen kind of show us real time what this looks like. Yeah. All right. Are and we going to go into are we ready to use some of these accounts and get some of our players in with us now that we've well, set up a world before we do that let's just talk briefly about the other steps and i took a little snap of those so that i can see them um, on here the next is what is the objective never well unless you just want the kids to play randomly never ever have a multiplayer world with no objectives 
I mean, it sounds ridiculous. You wouldn't have a lesson with no objectives. So don't have a multiplayer world with no objectives. And when I say that, I don't mean like, um, you know, you don't know what the ultimate goal is for for the um, for the lesson, say the Viking lesson that you're doing. But I mean, even minutia, just like I know that in the next 20 minutes, my students need to show me how many trees it takes to chop, how many trees they need to chop down to make a Viking longbow. And, the, and it's a mathematics lesson and we're going to do times tables. Or I know that when my children get into this world in the next 15 minutes, I need them to do X. And the reason I say that is because Minecraft is a time and task sink. And lots of teachers, um, but I don't think they quite appreciate how wonderfully lost children can get in Minecraft. And, and not because they're not enthusiastic and not because they're they're not doing what you ask them to do, but they're maybe not just doing it as linear as you want them to do or as as objectively as you want them to do. And so just just be prepared to sort of say to the kids, this is the objective. There are three things we need to achieve when we get into this world and out of this world. Um, otherwise, it's kids in a world and they'll just be like, I don't know what I want to do. And off they go. Um, and part yeah. of that's behavior management. But it's definitely, definitely that that objective piece is key. And we talked about this um, with Anne and with um, Nancy and Linda in our first couple of sessions too. So mentors on the call, if you have your favorite way of capturing those objectives, I saw Becky mm -hmm. posting about classroom norms, right? So if you're in Teams or Canvas or Classroom um, and you have making your assignment and you guys all watched how uh, Susie shared a world to teams and put a rubric in teams. So these are all those things that you would do. And now instead of pushing out that one world to all of them, you do have a new level of thing objectives that have to be there, right? Because they are in a shared world together. So mentors in the call, if you have any other examples, links, templates that you use when you are planning a multiplayer lesson, drop that in for us and we can take a peek. But yeah. awesome. Now we're going back to that back to that list I showed earlier where you think of what's my world, what's my objective. Um, so now we're, we're watching Steve and the teacher go through and kind of go from scratch. It's thinking, what's my world? What's my objective? And how am I going to get my students in there? So yeah, take us away. Absolutely. Well, once we've got that, what is the objective? And I think at this point, I'm just going to set an objective and I'm going to get as many people in as, as we can. So let's I'm going to set up a world. I'm just looking for it. It's in one of these folders. I've got so much stuff on my desktop. Make no while you comment. do that, while you get that loaded and, and decide which world you want for this lesson today, Stephen, I'm going to go ahead and take the screen away from you one more time. Mm, mm. And now I'm going to go back and share where I have the log on information. And so this one's going to be speed based. So if you aren't able to log in with us today to join the world, I'm going to try to make us some more accounts for tomorrow when we do esports so we can have some more players. We think we only have 11 um, at the moment. But so let me share my screen. It is. There it is. So, yeah, you want to be out of Minecraft now and getting ready to log in as one of these. Yeah, so if you were already logged into your school account, press log out, and then... And I'm going to need one of them, Wendy, so let me take oh, one. Oh, yeah, do, just, yeah, do that one first. Here, let me give you a chat before I put it on screen. It is. So I'm going to log out of Minecraft, and I'm going to log back in. Because remember, yesterday we talked about the tenant, and I need to... ...that I can host, and you can join me on that same tenant. Okay, hang on, Stephen. I'm just pinging you the first mm -hmm. one for, yeah, before okay. anyone else gets gets wind of it. Okay, yeah. here it comes. Um, okay, check your individual chat. And then let me share my screen so oh, everyone else can you. come on. So, mm -hmm. Okay. There it so, is. There's my slideshow. Okay, so don't. Now on my screen, here's all of our tenants. We've made you a couple. We've made some demo accounts. Don't use multiplayer one. That's the one that Steven's logging in now. Mm -hmm. But we have 10 other accounts that you can play. Oh, gosh, did I get this right? Actually, um, do use multiplayer one because I can log in on my Minecraft Education Edition dot com. Uh, I didn't okay. realize I, I didn't realize it was that, so I can do that. So yeah, do use multiplayer one. That means Oops, we can get. Oops, and one. it's not multiplayer one. One, hang on, sorry, goodness. Here we go. 
It's exclamation mark. So we've got 11 accounts. So you're either multiplayer one at minecrafteducationedition.com, you're multiplayer two, you're multiplayer three, all the way to 11. And then, then if you try 12, it, it won't work. We only have 11 for today. So see if you can't log in. If you don't, you can watch the fun unfold. So log in multiplayer one through 11 at minecrafteducationedition.com, password multiplayer exclamation point. Mm -hmm. Let's see how many people can join Steven's world. And then you can go ahead and share a screen again now if you want, Stephen. Yeah. Well, I'll just let them, uh, we'll just, um, I'll give them a, another <laughs> sort of to, Oh, yeah, yeah. On there, yeah. And then we'll go from there. And then we'll just see it's a lottery. Who, who managed to make it? Who got? Who made it to the island? <laughs> Anyone but... Ready for the code? Luke says oh, he's ready for Luke's the code. logged in. Boom. Oh, you need to. Oh, yeah. Once you log in, then you'll need the join code to go. But give us a thumbs up if you were able to log in. And, and what multiplayer number you were. Were you 1, 2, 3, or 11? All right. I'll share my screen. So we can't. You know the, the movie Cool Hands Luke? Well, we got to call our guy Fast Hands Luke because he was first to log in, right? You know, you know Oh, cool yeah. Hands Luke, Luke, right? Fast Hand Luke. Fast got and four, Luke. 11, a six. Sorry, everyone, if you weren't able to log in. If you come tomorrow for esports, we'll make you some more. We'll try to get everyone a chance to come in. Yep, indeedy. Now, Nathan got in what, number one. Oh, so wait, we I got the beast gonna... made it in the last one, 11. Perfect. Okay, folks, your code, which is actually only three, is Llama Agent Pickaxe. But I can't think of a rhyme with pickaxe. Pickax. Llama Agent Pickaxe. Man, sometimes with those those compound ones, then you gotta gotta kind of go to the one where like tax, mom or a candle is made agent of pickaxe. Don't pay the agent any tax. <laughs> <like that>. Well, <laughs> we're trying. Okay. We're trying our best. Here we go. We got seven lucky loot. Let's see who's coming in with us. We should have a whole bunch of people able to come in with us. So now, everyone, you are experiencing exactly the same feeling your students will when they are. So just think about how you want to set up your first lesson with sharing that code. We talked about you can screen share it. Maybe you put it in a, in a Word doc that has the lesson assignments. Oh, my goodness. Steve won joined the game. Steve's in. Look at that. Steve won. And it's I think it's Shakespeare. Hello. Four is in. Whoops. Let's have a look at who's joining. Alex, Steve, Alex, Steve, John. Yes, indeed. Or, oh, my goodness. So we won't see your real name, but we know who you are. Tell, who's our plaid? Can you repeat the code again? I'm so sorry. Indeed, not at all. It's Llama Agent Pickaxe. Oh, I saw John. John put his name in there. We had John Miller. Yes, he did. John Miller. The old friend John Miller's in with us. Good old John. Steve 42, look at this. We've got a party. This is bona fide party. So tell me, everyone, you all must feel that same boost of excitement. This is fun. Like the moment that you know you're in a world and other people are looking at you. Hopefully these are the same excitement that your students get too, to spice up their remote learning days. Indeed. Some people, people are leaving, left the game. Why is everyone leaving? No, 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 they're not. All right, it was good. So we've got Alex, John, Steve, Alex. We did have more in though. Why did people leave? But that's good. OK, so as for that objective, here's the thing. I want everyone in the hi everyone. I want everyone in this game to switch to game mode. So we're going to do forward slash game mode. Uh, zero. So you're going to go to game mode or game mode survival. So everyone switch to game mode survival. Did you want to explain for our noobs um, the difference between the two and why you made that pedagogical decision, Stephen? Yeah. Oh, creative, and I'll just come back to that in a sec. You guys stay on survival. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just do um, creative allows you to fly around and do what you want with the world, and we're just looking at our Pompeii world, which will be available very shortly for you all to play. Um, but what we are... Um, so you get a kind of a sneak preview of something here. But what we're going to do is we're going to whoops, I just chopped a bit of tree down. I didn't mean that. The reason I'm doing um, survival is survival mode means that we have to survive in the world. We have hearts, we have hunger, and we have the capacity to 
able to, if we want to lift some soil, we're going to have to dig that soil and actually use it. There it is there. So we can dig that soil and I'll put it back down and the grass will grow. And what I want is my mission with our Doctor Strange character here and all sorts like that um, is I want to, if you follow me, we are going to go and get ourselves some wheat because we're, we're in Rome and we're going to make fermentatio, which was the free bread that they gave out in Pompeii. And it was kind of like a, a socialist system. So follow me. It was a socialist system. Oh, we're just waiting on Alex Seven. Over here, Alex. Over here. So I'll give a quick stop, everyone. So if you didn't get to log in, remember that um, maybe you pressed join code and yours was four. That probably means you're still just logged into your school's Minecraft Education Edition. Remember, we had to give you our, our account, so pretend Minecraft Education Edition, that's our tenant, and we can only have people in our school join. So we made all of those student accounts for you to join, but we only had 11 for today. So now, so you don't so you don't get lost with us and you just want to kind of watch the magic, um, sit back if you're not logged in um, and watch what happens as a multiplayer live lesson goes, goes down down. Um, and then, Stephen, just a couple other things. Did you want to show and maybe have everyone press um, T and g give a hello so they know how to use their chat? Yeah, let's do that. So let's if you just press T and then you just and then say, go ahead and tell us who you are. Yeah, if, if, if that Hi, way we everyone. know we have Alex 12. So there we go. Sarah, Sarah from, from Toronto is Steve 8. That's great. Nathan, Nathan from, Brisbane. from Brisbane is Steve 4. Hello, John. John Miller. Hi, He's just like I'm from all over the world, mate. Crystal from Alaska. Hello, Crystal. Denise from California. And then Look at that. when you lead your lesson, so let's say, Stephen, we were all of your seventh graders and we're going to Pompeii with you. It's 11 a.m. and we logged in and we thought it was going to be just another boring PowerPoint about Pompeii. Mm -hmm. But then we're like, oh, my gosh, Stephen's our teacher. And then he's like, log in, everybody. Let's go. Are you typically doing this over teams how we can all hear you and you're walking through or sometimes do you do you lead this where you aren't using voice and where you are just using the chat how, tell well, us about how you might actually lead this yeah if it's face to face of course in the class we're just doing it together and i'm giving instruction and i'm probably in with them and i'm sitting at a separate desk and then every so often i'll leave my character i'll leave my desk and i'll go speak to the kids but in a remote learning environment we're always generally attached via voice and very often that's teams because that's you know the way we're working that through um through the school systems but but otherwise kids will quite often especially if i'm in their worlds and i'm in their systems and they want to show me their work sometimes we're in discord as well and the kids are like i have a discord channel join here da, 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 and we get to as long the kids love to be voice connected in their little communities but um but teams teams is generally where i'll join and particularly when breakout rooms comes we're going to have so much more flexibility of being able to use this um and that, I, i'll generally always be voice connected with my students um I, I very rarely do text instruction so everyone follow me i'm in creative mode just simply because i want to continue the, the demo but if we follow follow me down the streets of pompeii and then we're going to head over and somebody's flying steve four you should be in survival mode mister Mr. Sandy, um, and then we're going to head over here. And now, this is the bakery. There's lots of buildings, but this is the bakery, OK? And we're going to be coming back here, but for the moment, so try to remember your way around. We're going to head along the streets of Pompeii with the volcano looming above. And then we're going to head through the public forum. Uh, actually are over this way so actually we're not going through the public forum we're going over here and you see how everyone's following me generally this will happen with children <laughs> it's really nice that you know they'll follow you and they'll be like hey what's next um and then when we head up here we have a farm and what i want you to do is i want you to collect as much wheat as you can just you uh, now i'm in survival i'm in creative mode but you'll see when if i swap game modes so game mode zero and you've got a few moments to do that i'm going to tell you when you're done but you'll see if I knock this over, I get seeds and I also get wheat and I can pick that up and I can get seeds and wheat. There we go. And I can also replant the seeds, which is good crop rotation. And then I can just so get into the habit of replanting. If you would, I've run out of seeds and I'm collecting wheat. I'm just going to let everyone else collect that. So all you do is you left click on the wheat and then you pick up what falls out. So if you haven't played Minecraft much yet, all you're doing is pointing, left clicking, and then moving forward. Point, click, left, move forward. 
Steve Four's trying to do game mode one again. I've got my eye on you, Steve Four. <laughs> so collect as much bread as you can, because what we're collectively doing is what the Romans actually did. And they made fermentatio. And fermentatio was a um, was a bread that they gave out to the masses in times of, it was actually generally, but what they did was they gave it out particularly in times of strife and um, imperial imperial trouble. Steve, I think you're in game mode one, are you, Steve four? Wherever Steve four is. So if you're trying to change game mode and you want to be in survival, you do forward slash and then game mode and then zero. So I've got it on the screen if you want to look at that. So it's forward slash game mode zero, that puts you in Survival. And Stephen, when you were setting, like, let's say you were the setting up your live lesson and everyone comes, mm. you might have on screen on either a PowerPoint or something with the rules of saying, like, hey, we're going to go on all game mode survival. Let's make sure everyone's there. Is that kind of yeah. your MO for when you are getting kids set up and ready to go? Yeah, or I do that verbally generally. I'm just like, right, you know, I always do a briefing beforehand and I say, right, here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're trying to achieve. And this is how long it's going to take. Uh, everybody know what their role is. And I'll maybe sometimes give kids roles and I'll say, right, your role is to do this. Your role is to do that. OK, and then we meet back here and we almost make it an adventure. Everything's a story. So I say, and then when we're finished, we meet back here in 20 minutes. Ready? Go. And they're all like, yay. And off they go. Um, and we kind of make it an adventure. The other thing you can do, and this is this is sort of bordering on um, this is bordering on the the advanced, but certainly you could have command blocks, which we you know we can talk about another time. But you can have command blocks, and when you enter the world and you press a button, you become game mode zero or game mode, you know survival or game mode creative, or you become um, it ra it starts raining or whatever. So now that we've cr collected as much wheat as we possibly can, what we're going to do is we're all going to gather back at this side of the farm. Come and gather at this side of the farm for me, everyone. Great. Such good students. It just came right to you. Uh, except, where is he? Here, here he comes. <laughs> here he comes. There's always one. Eh? Where have you been? Right, OK. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go down the stairs and we're going to head back to the bakery. So let's try and remember our way to the bakery. And in fact, I'm going to let you find the bakery and I'm going to go up and just watch you. Who remembered the bakery? Through the public forum, past the temple, along Augusta Street <laughs> and into the bakery. Excellent, everyone. Now, now what you're going to do is you're going to make as much bread as possible, fermentatio. So up here are your, you see these wooden boxes? These are your crafting tables. You're going to right click on a crafting table and then you're going to do the following. You're going to take wheat and I'm just showing this on my screen. You take wheat and you just put three in a row. Right click, right click, right click and you'll get one loaf of bread. Then right click, right click, right click, and you get one loaf of bread and you do the same. You can also put all of it like one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Just do it all at once and see how many bits of bread you get. I managed to make four loaves in the time. And what we're doing is a slight competition. Who managed to make the most bread? And then we ask the kids, you know, generally they'll be we're on vocal and they'll say, I made 12, I made 13. Um, and uh, and then and then we and, you know, so that's a mini competition, but then we teach them what that bread was for. So once you've finished it, let's head over here and put your bread. I'm going to put mine in this chest by right clicking on the chest and putting it in. Choose a different slot for yours and just put yours in. Make sure everybody chooses a new fresh slot in the chest at the end. You can see someone's in the chest. Steve 8 is in there. Ooh, what did Steve 8 get? Steve 8 got six bits Woo! of bread. Who else? Let's go in and have another look. Oh, someone got 15 loaves Dang. of bread. Dang, who was our seven. 15 breader? Who was that? that? Reveal nine. yourself. Oh, somebody's taken those 15 and put, there we are, and put 19 bits <laughs> of wheat in. Can you see what's going on here? I see what's going on. Um, and then, yeah, so you get the idea. And then what we've done, so we've made the fermentatio. Now, the next part of the story might be tomorrow, we might all 
market and we have to deliver it. We have there's a chest in every house and every household needs bread. So then it's to see who can deliver the bread the, the fastest around the city. And that fermentatio, if you read about it online, it was fascinating. There were these huge loaves of bread and they were given out to the people, particularly during times of war and strife and famine. It was disgusting, apparently, and it was made with really bad wheat and mouldy and damp wheat. <laughs> but it was given out and people people would have died without it. Um, and then we can do another thing. We can say, I tell you what, one more exercise. Everyone run off into Pompeii, claim a building by getting into it and then decorate it the way you think you want it decorated. Alex Seven is not hanging oh, around. Oh, look at him go. Alex Seven is <laughs> yeah. Oh, goodbye. And the city's huge. Um, the city's and I like huge. how you're showing, um, Stephen, I love how you're just show kind of showing your classroom management strategy of floating ahead and seeing what's going on. Yeah. So. And if your kids have questions, it, like Alex Seven might be, I'm in this building and I can't build. And I just come down and I say, right, what is it you need? So Alex has delivered some bread um, and <laughs> someone else has gone in to create the temple here. Oh, no, they're gone. So they've gone somewhere else. There we go. Steve won. Just claim a building, any building. There's the poor quarters. There's the marketplaces. There's an ironmongers over here. There's a school with a pedagogus in it. And you could become the teacher instead, John Miller. I see you went straight. John Miller's already ready to be a teacher. Yeah. I love it, of course. We have a theatre over the back here. There's all sorts of places you can go. And then we've got one more fun exercise. And I'm going to get I'm going to give everyone a really fun exercise to finish tonight on. We're actually bang on time. In fact, I tell you what. Forget the building one. We can do that again together sometime. I want everyone to come to me in the public forum. Do you remember where we were in the, as we passed the public forum? I'm just going to hover and you're going to come to me. And we're going to head over. Follow me. Some of you are still floating around, which is great. If you're in survive, if you're in game mode one, that's fine. John, stay where you are. Turn around. You're going to come into the gladiatorial arena. So everyone come into the gladiatorial arena. And then I want you to go into your inventory and I want you to give yourself a sword. Get yourself a iron sword. You'll see it. We've actually called it a gladius. So get yourself a gladius. So that's pressing E for inventory. Search for gladius. So just G-L-A-D will do it and you'll find Gladius and you take that and you put it in your inventory till it's in your hand. So I can see that Steve 8's got one, Alex 8's got one, etc. Steve's got one. It's great. So inventory, find yourself a Gladius. Ooh, Alex has got a shield. This is getting crazy. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop up here and I'm going to shut the gates. So now there's no way out. <laughs> and then... <laughs> I am going to press this button and this button and this button. Oh, look, baby gladiators, get going, get going, look. So I'm just going to keep pressing and the gladiators, are you got to finish those gladiators off, folks. <laughs> <laughs> so now we've got Roman gladiatorial arenas and we have crazy people and I'm going to sit up here and throw rotten tomatoes and it's just going to be all fun. So you get <laughs> the idea. No more do we feel like we're actually in Rome than right this moment. Right well, Stephen, if everyone could just unmute and give us a huge thank you, Stephen, our game master for the night. Thank you. Not at, all, not at all. Thank you. And what I will say is sure. very, very briefly before we finish, I know we didn't talk about assessment. I will start with that tomorrow because it's actually pertinent to um, to esports also. So tomorrow we'll do assessment, then we'll move into um, esports. Awesome. We do have our final um, door prizes today. Go ahead and tweet either a fun screenshot of your bread in Pompeii. Um, if you made it, if you didn't and you're sad, don't worry. You can still come with us tomorrow. We will try to make enough for everybody for our esports competition tomorrow. So come early so you can make sure to get that account. And then in our chat here to be eligible, drop in your aha moment. What's something that clicked for you today? You got to see um, yesterday we looked at how do you technically set up as a host like Steven. Should have got all that taken care of. Today you started to see what happens when I pick a world. How do I set it up so I know what my kids are going to do? How are I gonna, what's my objective? What do I want them to do? And you even see, saw the masterful Stephen walk us through just even that live facilitation, which is a, it's a whole mm. new skill in and of itself, right? Like you are almost classroom management in this world, like you're back in, in your classroom walls. It's really fun. And I'm sure the students, all of you, 
felt that. Like you almost feel like you are back in the room with Stephen. You're smiling, you're laughing as you see John going over to the teacher pedagogy room. Um, so it's so, so fun. So drop in those aha moments in the chat. Let's see if anybody has one. I like the part of border, says Ryan. I love Stephen's giggles as he closed the gladiator gates. That was a very, very yet spaces um ibrahim loves it all together goose you love the borders as well our winner from our reflection chat is going to be just scrolling through and i think we've got uh allow and deny blocks from crystal javier you can email us at mcedu at microsoft as our um, door prize winner from the chat and then I will go ahead and see did anybody do a fun Ooh, cool Christina is our winner of today on Twitter saying learning about Roman culture harvesting wheat baking bread providing for the community and gladiator games all of that in 15 minutes it's, it's pretty incredible so so wonderful thank you Stephen really appreciate it everybody if you still have technical questions you're not you still might be a little bit lost right um, go ahead and make sure you do click that link for the Minecraft Teacher Academy it'll take you through some of these things real slow if you have a technical issue you didn't get answered today Adam dropped that link to create a support ticket to follow up with you one on one. And of course, if you're ready to think, oh my gosh, how do I get like Steven and feel confident to lead this bread lesson? Um, we will be doing a mentor match where you can have your idea, maybe get on the phone with somebody um, like Becky or like John or all of our mentors who are on the call who might sign up to match up with you, who can help you make this actually come to life now that you technically know what multiplayer looks and feels like. And hopefully you're excited as we are. Look at all the carnage left behind in the room. And I, I just watched Alex, Alex just before I left, Alex died. I saw him in the corner. He was cornered by two of them and he died. <laughs> but hey, we had great entertainment today on a Roman scale. And if I was an emperor, I would have been satisfied. Your giggle <laughs> shows me that you were an emperor in a past life, Stephen. Thanks for joining us, Stephen. We'll be here for esports competition. We have special door prizes just for esports tomorrow. Yep. So don't miss it. We'll see you guys. And we will Excellent. have this recording uploaded in our YouTube um, by the end of the day. So have a and great yes. to see you all. Thanks for coming. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.